All right, good morning, Terrell here. Uh, today we're gonna do a 20, I wanna say 2012 STI sedan uh, doing air pump deletes. Um, I'm gonna show you kind of the way I do it, um, where all the bolts are, probably everybody does it the same way, but I'm just gonna make a video on it. So if you wanna know how to do it, then I can show you how to. Now this one's it's really hot right now, um, but you start with, you have four bolts on that side and four bolts on this side of the intake that are all 12s, so you wanna take those off. Uh, to get to these ones, you have to take this coolant reservoir off, and it has two 12s here. And then you want to take the intercooler off, which has one 12 here. And then you have a uh, um, flathead right there. You have two 12s here. You have one flathead down there, and then usually you have one 12 there, but this one doesn't. So once those are all off, then you take the intercooler off. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. All right, intercooler is off, and you can see there's one air pump. Um, it's like the motor or whatever back there and then the other one it goes It's gonna go across the bottom like this and then down below by the turbo and attach the other head So I think on this one I have to take the intake manifold off for sure. I don't think there's any other way to do this Okay, all the bolts are off are all loose on the intake on both sides uh, Now you take off this green guy from the alternator and then I take off this 12 I'm gonna take off the, obviously the battery negative terminal and then lower the alternator down, take out the 12 here and the 12 here, remove the alternator so that the wiring that's in front is easier to get off. And then I'm gonna put a plug on the line over here for coolant, remove the container, and remove the arrow separator lines that are in the way of this. And then start disconnecting all the, uh, the electronics. On this side, you're gonna just have a cam sensor back there. I'll have to try to show you if I can. And then there's a oil control valve that's blue that you'll unplug. And then the exact same on this side, oil control valve and cam, cam sensor. And then the front, I'll show you once I get the alternator off. Alrighty, the alternator has been removed. Now you have the crank sensor right here. You're gonna pop this off. You have the oil pressure sensor right there. You have the coolant temp sensor right there. And then you have your power steering pressure sensor, I believe is what that's called. And then the entire front is pretty much done, except for the fact that this is an STI. So this also does actually have um, oil control valves on the bottom I have to unplug as well. But the front in here is completely done. I guess I'll just pop this off if I can on camera. <sighs> there we go. Now that's all three up here. And now we just work on this side and this side and then you have, I believe, um, a coolant line to the throttle body and a coolant line on the bottom of the throttle body. And then you're going to start lifting the throttle body up and seeing what else you have hanging up. Obviously I have air to oil, air to oil separator lines. So I'm gonna have to take uh, this line off down. Let's see here, actually this one right here. And the boost line or the boost controller, I believe on this car sits right here. Or right here, so you have to take off the uh, the vacuum lines that go to the turbo, and then pull this intake up. And like I just said, just find where all the things are holding on. I'll do my best to record it. I almost forgot to include this. So you have to take off the wiring bundle right here, and then you have to take the coil packs off of each side as well. Um, that's at least the way I do it. You take the two 12s, you can see one. Oh yes, you can't super well, but there's one right down there if it'll ever focus. And then, yeah, the oil control valve on the bottom is that wire there that you can't see very well because it's blurry. Also, you have to take the fuel lines off. I use zip tie tricks, so I take a zip tie in two. I stick one in on each side and push till it kind of pops this open. Push the line forward and then it comes right off. And then you have this line comes off. This is your... Uh, brake booster vacuum line and then you also have a vacuum line right here Alrighty, on the back you're also going to have the turbo in it which is going to be a 10 or usually on the turbo and then down here you're also going to have the knock sensor it's going to be kind of a white plug typically you unplug that and then i think that's almost all the sensors on the back of the, of the intake manifold Alrighty, I got all the sensors on the bottom unplugged on both sides uh, the coil packs and all the sensors are here and here now, the knock sensor's off. I've got both the coolant lines on the throttle body off, the one down there, the turbo one that's loose. And I'm basically, I remove some of the bolts from the intake manifold so when I pull it up, it doesn't get so annoying um, and they don't catch. I drained a lot of the coolant out so it wouldn't spill over inside of the actual um, cylinder head holes. 
And now I'm currently trying to remove this intake manifold. You can see how loose it is. Just gotta kind of feed it up out of here. Always wants to catch on this line, so I may have to take this out. Um, but I should be able to pull it out in just a minute here. That was a bit more of a pain, but I got it off. Um, you can see air pump, air pump, or uh, these are the motor, or the some sort of motors for them. And I remove this entire assembly down the bottom, move this guy off the back of the head down here, clean it up, get some new intake manifold gaskets, and then install everything back on. Uh, I had forgotten this one clamp on the bottom here. Uh, otherwise, it feels all off. Turbo looks pretty healthy. Yep, so you take the intake manifold off, get the cleaning now. All right, so to remove these air pumps, I started with taking off this bolt for this air, this motor, whatever this is, this bolt for the coolant crossover pipe, and that one as well, so I can move this if I need to. I took off the two bolts, one here and one here on this motor, and then this guy right here I moved, and then I'm gonna take these two bolts off right there, and right there to remove this motor. That way it doesn't, it, it isn't so finagled in there. And then I just removed this part right here. And I'm gonna install this one for this side, new gasket on there, and then get that all bolted tight. And then work on the other side, getting that off. And then it's just literally cleaning the intake off and installing the intake back on and then tuning. Alrighty, this side's done. I'm gonna try to get a, a video so you can kind of see how it's sitting in here. It's gonna, it's gonna be really difficult, but right there. All right, now the next side. I haven't done one of these in a little while and I've run into a slight issue on this side. I've got the top bolt out of the, uh, out of the, um, the pump on this side, but the bottom bolt I can't get to. So I'm currently removing the turbo. I took off the vendor bolt up here. All the downpipe bolts are off. I'm gonna take the downpipe bolts off on the bottom and then remove the downpipe and then remove the turbo. And then it should be an easy swap, just a little more difficult than I thought it was gonna be, but it's whatever, I'll figure it out. All right, so I got the other air pump, or the, the entire line that was in here out. So this looks cleaner. Currently trying to tighten this up. You can see the air pump lead is right there. I'll show you how difficult this is, if I can get a good picture on this. Yep. Nice and fun. Well, now both air pump deletes are on. You can see when I zoom in, that one's nicely on there. And now we're gonna put this all back together. Alrighty, I got the turbo and everything else back on tight. Replaced the coolant line on the bottom that was leaking. Um, air pump stuff's all done. Just gonna leave that motor on because that one still gets plugged in for the barometer pressure sensor. Got the intake manifold gaskets back on. I got the heads cleaned on top with some scotch Brite, and now it's ready to drop the intake manifold back on. Alrighty, I got the intake manifold back on. Go through a little checklist here for you. Um, crank sensors on, oil pressure sensor, coolant, power steering. I have both of the lower sensors in. I have the oil, um, oil sensor right here in. The back cam sensor right there, you can't see super well. Both coil packs, turbo and that's back on. I gotta plug that line in still, right there. Got both of the coolant lines to the throttle body back on. Have the PCV valve back in. Have that guy plugged on. This side, same thing. The oil control valve right here. Cam sensor back there. Both the rear plugins, both of the coil packs. And she's almost there. I usually put the battery in. Um, well, I, next thing I'll do is I'll put the bolts in the intake manifold. I always put the, the sensors on just in case I accidentally pinch one and I know I don't break it. So now I'll put all the bolts in on both sides, all eight of them, tighten those things down. And then I'll put the battery on and I'll typically prime it here and make sure that the fuel lines are on correctly. And then it's pretty much just intercooler. I gotta still put the downpipe bolts in and then the intake and then I gotta put coolant in it. And obviously the alternator. 
Also, don't forget to plug in your engine connector, the harness, and the boosting tool is underneath this. I forgot about that. Um, I couldn't remember which one of these things it was, but it's underneath that. Yeah, so I got those tight, got those tight. Now it's just downpipe and intercooler, and I'm almost there. Just a couple little things left. Alrighty, the second day here, uh, I got the intake manifold and everything else on, and I won't lie, uh, two bolts for the coolant crossover pipe I forgot to put in. So I had to take the intake manifold back up, put them back in, and when I did that, I actually noticed that the inlet was torn. Let me show the inlet here. So you can see right here, that tear. I didn't notice it at first, uh, I just overlooked it. Anyhow, got that fixed, I'll show you this. So now we have a new inlet. Silicone three inch inlet comes all the way down and there's cob intake and everything is back together now I'm uh, gonna go put coolant in make sure we don't have any leaks and then put the intercooler on and uh, Make sure the fuel lines are routed correctly and then about ready to start it and Do some tuning get this thing going. So this guy's happy looks a lot better with these deletes Yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna hopefully get this thing going make it perfect for him Alrighty, first start sounds good Leave the coolant. Just turn the codes off and look at that. No check engine light. We're running nice and smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and drive it, make sure she's dialed in. Give her back to customer. All right, I took her for her last drive. No check engine lights on. No finer knock. Feedback hit negative four in a shift. Otherwise, it looks really clean. Hitting about 15, 16 pounds of boost, and uh, everything else looks pretty clean. Using about 70% of the injectors. Clean poles sounds sounds really really quite nice. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want another video like this where I do another install or whatever, let me know. Otherwise, again, thank you for watching.